Hi, my name is Alex, and in this episode of Magic Missile Minis, I'm going to be repainting some of the very first miniatures that I ever painted. So as you can tell from these photos, when I first started out, I had no idea what I was doing, which is kind of normal for any kind of hobby when you're first getting into it. But when I had started, I was using like hardware store primer, and the paints that I were using were just normal acrylic paint for painting on canvases, and I didn't even think to thin them at all. So by the time I was finished, there was basically no detail on these miniatures. So I got another miniature from the same army of these first guys that I painted, and I'm going to paint that guy with the same idea in mind for the kind of design that I want to put on this guy. I thought it'd be fun to see how far I've come as far as my ability to paint miniatures. But anyways, let's get into the video. So first things first, I take the sprue of the miniature and start chopping it up so that I can assemble it. Here I'm just cutting out all the sprues with my craft knife, which in retrospect I probably should have used a cutting board and rather than just using my table. I then make sure to get rid of any mold lines. Something important to keep in mind when you're doing this is just how you're using the knife that you're cleaning up your miniatures with. This is just a random thought I had while I was recording the audio for this video. It's one of those things that you should always be keeping in mind and you should never get too comfortable when using a knife. Cause then you might do something silly and like cut yourself on accident cause that'd be a really silly thing to do. Who would do that? I, I would never do that. Um. Anyways, once I've cleaned up most of the mold lines, I can start to assemble the miniature, scoring all the edges that I want glued, and then gluing them together with some super glue. Although one thing that I wish I had done that I didn't do was paint each of the pieces separately, um, or not all of the pieces, but most of the pieces separately, because then there are certain parts of the miniature that were very difficult to actually paint, because other parts were in the way. Mainly this backpack here. I kind of wish I had attached that to a separate little painting handle and painted it separately and then added it on so that I had full access to the back of this guy's cloak or cape thing. Here's a little turnaround of the assembled miniature. I unfortunately didn't get a turnaround of it when it was primed, but I also primed it differently using Mechanicus Standard Grey rather than Chaos Black, which you can see here now that I'm actually painting it. I start by filling in the two more prominent colors, starting with the metal areas of the miniature. The color that I'm using for this metal is Vallejo model colors silver mixed in with Vallejo model colors black. As far as metallics go, the Vallejo model color silver isn't the best, but the way that I'm going to remedy that is later on I'll be adding a wash over that color and that will help make it not quite as noticeable. At some point I'm going to need to get a better metal color, but I simply haven't gotten around to it. If you guys have any ideas for what metals you guys like to use, leave them in the comments and I'll check those out and maybe buy those and you can see me using those in future videos. With the metals base coated, I can then move on to paint all of the material in a kind of a brown maroon type color. Getting this color was a little bit of a mess and just one of those, I've got like 20 different colors on my paint palette and I've just mixed them all together a hundred times and now I have this color but I'll try to give you some idea of the way that I got this color. The main color I'm using is Vallejo model colors dark vermilion and that's mixed in with a little bit of purple, a little bit of model colors refractive green as well as a little bit of model colors flat brown and model colors azure something loosely similar to that combination came up with this color that I'm using here. As I record the audio for this video, I'm slowly just realizing that I still really don't know what I'm doing. But at least that means that there's some room for improvement and that I can get better, which is always an encouraging thought. But as you see here, once I've finished the base tones, I can start adding some of these smaller little bits of color here and there. Adding an off-white to the handles on his axe that he's wielding, that I got from mixing Vallejo model colors yellow ochre and their white, giving a nice off-white that I can use for the handles, but I also add some of the same color onto the skull, but rather than just doing the exact same color to add a little bit of variation, I add some flat brown that I'd used before to, again, just make the color a little bit different. Adding that same color to the little bit of the face that is showing on this miniature, and I'll just be able to differentiate that from the skull color by adding a different wash to it. 
As you can see me doing here, I also take more of the flat brown and add that to all the parts of the miniature that are leather. So that would be the belt and some of these pouches. And with that finished, I can go back in with some of the paints I had mixed before, cleaning up any of mistakes that I had made. I then wanted to break up some of these parts that were just large hunks of metal. So I add a little bit of gold onto some of the designs on the axe, as well as in some of the other areas, mainly using the gold as a place for all of the kind of decorative elements of the character's design, focusing on some of the skulls and other little design elements. To add some more variation onto the design of the miniature, I add some brass in certain areas. Unfortunately, I forgot to film which paints exactly that I'm using, but it's a mixture of an orange, a gold paint, and the flat brown that we've used before. And of course, the gold is just a straight gold paint. But again, I go around with this brass color as a way of adding a little bit of variance within the actual mechanical parts of the miniature, saving the gold for stuff that seems to be a little bit more decorative as much as possible, but using the brass for stuff that's like machinery to make the mechanical parts of the miniature not look boring. I then also take some black paint and add that to some of the larger areas on the mechanics of this miniature, primarily using it on some of the ribbed pipes that you see here to make them look like they're made of some kind of industrial rubber or something. After that's done, I can start doing some highlighting. So I water down the main paint I had been using for the cloak, then add that color onto all the places where I want there to be a highlight. Then after all of the highlights are in place, I add more of the paint and with a dry brush start to spread that out to create some gradients. This part of the process is always really fun and I always love looking at the footage of this part because it's very very satisfying when you get a really really nice clean gradient. So I always feel a little bit uh, guilty whenever I cut any of it out because it's just so much fun to watch. But anyways, I start doing that in several different colors, adding more and more white into the paint mixture that we had done so that the highlight becomes brighter and brighter. And one tip is when you're doing these highlights, always make them brighter than you think you want them to be, especially if you're using a light or something like that so you have good lighting, always make it a little bit brighter than you need. That way when people are just looking at it and it's not in perfect lighting, you can still see that there are some highlights going on. Once I have that area done, I can move on to do the highlights on the rest of the miniature, adding the brightest highlight onto all the other folds of the clothing. For a lot of these areas, I don't need to have it gradient out quite as much as the shoulder since there's not quite as much of a rounded area to it. Once all the highlights for the cloak are finished, I then move on to add highlights onto the metals. But before I do that, I want to add a wash onto all of the metals. For the gold and brass, I I want to add a brown wash using Agrax Earthshade, and then for all of the other metallic bits I use everybody's favorite wash, Nuln Oil. And these washes are going to help darken these colors. It's also going to mask the quality of the metallics that we've been using. The metallics I have aren't actually the best metallics that are out there, as I mentioned earlier. But what they are perfectly fine for is highlighting. So once I've shaded all of the metallics, I go back in with some silver and start adding some highlights to all of the gunmetal parts of the miniature. And I'm doing that the same way that I had done with the cloak, except that I'm using the metal paints. Adding a little bit of water to water it down, and then adding layer upon layer of the silver to create a highlight. One thing that's always important to remember when you're doing highlights is to keep in mind always where your light source is coming from. Otherwise your highlights just look random and confusing and your miniature will just look off for some reason. And then I just repeat this process around the entirety of the miniature, which for this miniature, especially with, this, with the silvers, it's quite a lengthy process. Since the miniature has a ton of these kind of steampunky metallic parts in the design, which is probably one of the things that made me pick up the Adeptus Mechanicus as my first miniatures that I wanted to buy and paint. But anyways, once I've gone around the entirety of the miniature adding all of the silver highlights, I then take a gold paint and start doing the same for the brasses and the golds. Again, paying close attention to where my light source is which as you can see is kind of beside him and slightly above him. 
which for me personally, I think that's a much more interesting highlight zone to be rather than just directly above or in front of the miniature. Because that way I can add more highlights and more interest to stuff like the backpack for this miniature, which if it was just coming from in front of the miniature, I wouldn't be able to put as many interesting highlights onto it. Once all of the highlights are finished, I then also add a little bit of that same Agrax Earthshade Brown we had added onto the goals onto the handles that we had painted off white to show some of the details. I then add a little bit of a highlight onto the skull that we have here just using some straight white since I'm also going to be covering this in more of the Agrax Earthshade. Using the Agrax Earthshade to be the shadow for the skull, wiping it off in areas where there would be uh, higher highlights and leaving it to be a little bit thicker around the bottom and on the side of it where there would be shadows. I then go ahead and add the eyes and eyebrows for the miniature, and then cover that face in Reichlin Flash Shade, which is a red contrast paint that will help differentiate it from the skull. One other detail that I had added to my very first miniatures was a little bit of freehand for a pattern on their cloaks, and so I'd also try to mimic that here, but a little bit better, obviously. Although unfortunately not a whole lot better. A lot of the lines are th much thinner and uh, more to scale, but still a little bit uneven or wavy. I think that some of these free hands is an area where I'm going to have to improve to do these smaller details. But all things considered, I don't think they turned out that bad. Um, compared to the first miniatures, I think they're fantastic. Um, but there's just a couple details that I wish I could have done a little bit better. And then as a final detail, I start adding a little bit of OSL, starting by painting in all the different areas that I want to glow in this dark vermilion color. And then to make the light sources look like they're glowing, I add a little bit of white to the vermilion and start creating a little bit of a gradient within all the different lights adding more and more white to the paint that I'm adding and making the little dot that I'm adding smaller every single time, but not quite getting to where the dot is a bright white. I then go around to all the areas surrounding each of these lights and add a little bit of that base dark vermilion color that we had added before to create the feel like they are glowing. In certain areas, just doing edge highlighting with the full color, whereas other areas, like some of the larger flatter areas, I actually water down the color and start doing a little bit of glazing to make it look like the color is dispersing off of the hood of this miniature, as you can see me doing right here. But once that final detail is added and I give the miniature a base, the miniature is finally finished. I really enjoyed working on this project. It was cool to see just how much my painting has progressed since I had started painting miniatures. I obviously still have a couple things I need to work on, namely the freehand that I did on this miniature in particular. I didn't quite like how it turned out, especially the little gold bits I felt like were a little messy, but the rest of the miniature I'm really happy with how it turned out. But anyways, thank you so much for watching that video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, subscribe, and hit the bell to get notified of when I release new videos. If you guys have any questions, you can leave it in the comments, and I'll be sure to reply to those. But anyways, thank you so much for watching once again, and I'll see you guys in the next video.